All right, this is a, a presentation about mirrors in lenses fitting for a, an introductory level physics class, but made specifically for my Physics for Life Sciences 2 class, where we use Wilson and Buffa College Physics, and this is Chapter 23. And these are the topics in Chapter 23. We're going to cover all of these things except for lens aberrations. So when we talk about lenses and mirrors, we often start off with talking about plain mirrors, which just means a flat mirror, like the kind of mirror you might see in your bathroom when you're brushing your teeth. Plain mirrors are kind of boring. Um, wherever you place the object, the image appears at that same distance, but behind the mirror. And these flat mirrors only can have virtual images, meaning that they are behind the mirror. And <clears throat> the, the mirror length that you can see the entire object <clears throat> happens to be, right, half the height. And <clears throat> here are some equations, but truly flat mirrors aren't very interesting. What's far more interesting are spherical mirrors, meaning curved. And when we talk about spherical mirrors, we have two possible shapes. One shape is concave. So here, if we think of our concave surface, where's my, oh, there it is, <clears throat> right? Uh, my light can go in. It's kind of like a cave. This on the outside here is a convex surface. Right, so if you think of this like a spoon, this is where you would put your soup, right? And this is the outside of the spoon. Right? And then maybe when you were a kid or maybe more recently, you've played around looking at your image in a large spoon, right? The concave side versus the convex side. And these different shapes give us different image characteristics. The same is true when we talk about lenses. So lenses can also have convex and concave shapes. These are just a few examples. Um, a concave mirror is converging, and we noticed that a convex lens is also converging, and we'll talk about that term here in a minute. Um, and then concave lenses are diverging, just like convex mirrors are diverging, meaning Converging, the light comes together, right? So if we talked about a lens, if it was Plano convex, and here is my object, and <clears throat> the light comes in, here's my pathway, it comes in and it bends because it actually passes through my lens that is made of glass or plastic or some kind of transparent medium and we see that the light converges if we think about a mirror that's concave right here is my center line here's my image and <clears throat> here are the difference is that the light reflects and same idea right my light comes together meaning oops, converging. When we talk about diverging, if we talk about a lens, if we have a, this one happens to be double concave or bi-concave, by bi like bicycle. Here's my center line, here's my object, and here my light comes through and it, because of the shape of the lens, Right? My light bends and comes apart, diverging. Same is true when we talk about a convex mirror. So remember, again, like our concave mirror, our light comes in, and instead of passing through, it reflects. And so when the light reflects off this curved surface, it spreads apart, again, diverging. So when we talk about converging and diverging, right, 
it can be a little confusing. So I often tell students that drawing a picture or picturing where the light goes, whether it's passing through the lens right, or reflecting off the mirror surface, is a good way to keep which is which kind of in your, in your brain. There are sign conventions for lenses and mirrors, and the good news is that they're exactly the same whether we're talking about lenses or mirrors. So if we have a real image, right, meaning in front of a mirror or behind a lens, which we'll get to that in a minute too, then <clears throat> when we calculate d sub i or measure it, it's going to be positive. <clears throat> in turn, the magnification is negative. How does that come apart about? Because the magnification is equal to negative, right? d sub i over d sub o. So if my distance of my object is positive, then my magnification is negative. And that is always going to be true. So this means a real image is always upside down. The same is true if I calculate or observe d sub i is either behind a mirror or in front of a lens, then it's virtual. And d sub i is considered negative. If we have a negative d sub i, then my magnification ends up being positive. And that means a virtual image is always upright. And this is true, again, whether we're talking about lenses or mirrors. So that's the good news. And then we have similar signage for our converging versus diverging. So converging, right, if we're talking about a mirror, right, then we're talking about a concave mirror. So a concave mirror always has a positive focal length. And a convex lens, whether it's biconvex or plano convex, is going to have a focal length that's positive. A diverging mirror, so a convex mirror, or right, a concave lens, whether it's biconcave or plano concave or any of the combinations we just saw. Those are always going to have a focal length that is negative. <clears throat> For mirrors, it will end up that this is quite important. Um, it's important for lenses too, but for a mirror, we have a very simple way of calculating the focal length. Right? The focal length is half of the radius of curvature, and then we have a plus or minus out front, indicating if it's a concave mirror, then it's positive radius of curvature divided by 2. It's a convex mirror, then it's negative right, radius of curvature divided by 2. It's a little more complicated for lenses, and we'll get to that a little later on. So here we have <clears throat> some prettier pictures than I can draw, where we have <clears throat> a concave mirror we can see that it's converging, right? And our, our, our rays reflect off the surface and, in this case, form an image that is in front of the mirror, meaning real, right? We can also create a virtual image um, with a concave mirror, but it's dependent on the focal length and where we place the object. And then here we have a virtual image formed by our convex mirror. Convex mirror has a negative focal length, and so you notice that the focal length is behind the mirror in this, in this sketch, opposed to the focal length being in front of our mirror for our concave mirror. So life is pretty easy. Again, because for spherical mirrors or thin lenses, we use exactly the same set of equations. So usually we are calculating d sub i from this equation because we'll be able to calculate the focal length or it'll be given to us. We'll be told where the object is placed and that leaves us d sub i. And then magnification, as I already mentioned, is negative d sub i 
divided by d sub o. Magnification, as we usually think about it, can also be the height of the image compared to its actual height, the height of the object. And so we have some fairly simple ways of determining the characteristics of our images, whether we're talking about spherical mirrors or lenses, right? We're going to use the same set of equations. So again, <clears throat> I can't stress enough that, right, if we have a concave shape for a mirror, that means converging. For lenses, it means diverging. For curved outward is convex. For a mirror, that's diverging. And for a lens, that's converging. So these are the differences between mirrors and lenses. In addition, when we talk about the images, um, a virtual image, so a virtual image is where d sub i is negative. Oops, I lost my thing again. There it is. d sub i is, right, we'll call it less than zero. It's negative. Then that means if we're talking about a mirror, it's behind the mirror. But if we're talking about a lens, a virtual image is in front of the lens. But it still is, right, a case where we've calculated d sub i and it's it's a negative number. If d sub i is positive, right, so we could say it's greater than zero, then that means the image is real. But if we're talking about a mirror, it means in front of the mirror. And if we're talking about a lens, it's behind the lens. So we have both similarities and and slight differences when we talk about lenses and mirrors, and sometimes that can be a little confusing. Here is just more another pretty picture of a convex mirror. It's diverging, so we see that the focal length is behind, and it ends up that <clears throat> our image will always be virtual. If we think about this, right, we have 1 over d sub o. We can think about it mathematically. 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over the focal length. That means that 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over the focal length minus 1 over d sub o. But when we're talking about a convex mirror, right, this is negative, And d sub o is always positive. And so when we do this calculation, d sub i is always going to be negative. There's just no way around it. And so mathematically, we can see that d sub i always going to be negative, and so a convex mirror can only result in an image that's virtual. If we talk about a concave mirror, we're going to look at the same equation, but we'll be able to see that sometimes our image is real and sometimes it is not. So here <clears throat> we have a concave mirror, right, and we have Right, a breakdown of real inverted, inverted enlarged, right, for our our concave mirror, right. In each case, our focal length is positive, right. But here, right, here's my focal length, and I place my object somewhere between the focal length and the surface of the mirror, right. <clears throat> that means that d sub o is less than the focal length, and I end up with a virtual, right, image. So how does that work? we can go back to our 1 over 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i equals 1 over the focal length. And so mathematically, we can again come up with the same scenario we did for our convex mirror. So 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over the focal length minus 1 over d sub o. So now we have fractional parts. So our concave mirror is converging, and so that means my focal length is positive, and d sub o is always positive, but d sub i, right, can be positive or negative. So how does that work? <clears throat> well, let's think about our virtual upright enlarged image. If d sub o is smaller than my focal length, then 1 over d sub o, right, is bigger than 1 over the focal length, right? That's my case right here. 
And if this is true, then I end up with d sub i is negative. But if I have, right, <clears throat> d sub o is bigger than the focal length, right, then 1 over d sub o is smaller than 1 over the focal length. And that results in d sub i having to be positive. So I can mathematically see that I can end up with a virtual image if I have my object close enough to the surface of the mirror, but I can also end up with a real image if I, in fact, have it right <clears throat> on the other side of the focal length, right, at, an, at a place where 1 over d sub o is less than 1 over the focal length. So mathematically, we can show exactly what we have here. And then the only difference is whether or not the image is smaller, reduced, meaning that the magnification, the absolute value of the magnification, right, is less than 1. And enlarged, this just means that the absolute value of my magnification is greater than 1. Right. Remember that if d sub i is in fact positive, then the magnification is negative. So that's why I'm looking at the absolute value in this case. This is just a really cool picture um, from a number of years ago from my friend Bonnie. Um, her husband installed this mirror, and it ended up that the sun came in, and the focal length of the mirror just happened to be right at the side of their wooden window frame. And this is very much like if you had a magnifying glass, if we're talking about lenses, right, where you focus the lens and set leaves on fire, for instance, when you were a kid, or ants, or whatever you might have done. Right? This is the exact same idea, except that it is a mirror, it's a concave mirror, right, meaning that it created an image that is real in front of the mirror, <clears throat> and it's focused, right, it ends up that, remember our, we have 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is 1 over the focal length. Well, the sun is infinitely far away. And 1 over infinity is just 0. So in this case, the focal length and the image are 1. And they just had the misfortune of having the focal length be almost exactly the distance from the mirror to um, the wooden frame. And yes, it, it did burn, as you can kind of see from, from the picture. Just a great application of what we're talking about. So let's do a problem. So here we have an object, and our object starts off that it is 3 centimeters tall, and it's placed 20 centimeters from the front of a concave mirror. So d sub o is 20 centimeters. It's a concave mirror, right? So this is converging, and that means that the focal length is positive. They give us the radius of curvature of our mirror is 30 centimeters. And so we can do our first calculation. The focal length is plus or minus r divided by 2. It's converging, so it's positive. In this case, 30 centimeters divided by 2. We don't even need a calculator, right? It's positive 15 centimeters. And we want to know these are just the answers so we can check ourselves. Where is the image formed? Here, when they say where, they don't just mean in front of the mirror or behind the mirror, right? We can already see that d sub o is larger than the focal length, so we can already tell that it's going to be real and it's going to be in front of our mirror, <clears throat> but that's not what they ask. Where? Here they want an answer like in centimeters. So our first calculation is 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over the focal length. Like we did when we were considering what kind of images formed, 
right, we're going to do a little algebra. So 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over the focal length plus 1 over d sub o. And we'll plug our numbers in. So we would have 1 over 15 centimeters minus 1 over 20 centimeters. Again, we can see that this is going to give us a number that is positive. So I will turn on my calculator. And so we have 15 inverted, right, minus 20 inverted. And that gives us right, 0 0.0167. But remember, that's 1 over d sub i. And we can see that that's 1 over centimeters. And so d sub i, if we take the inverse of that, right, we just flip it over, we get 60. So we have an answer that matches what we know are the right answer. So we have positive 60 centimeters. It's positive, and that means that it's real. Now I'm going to calculate the magnification. So negative d sub i divided by d sub o. So I have negative right, <clears throat> 60 centimeters, which was positive, divided by 20 centimeters. And look at that. I don't even need a calculator. My centimeters cancel. Magnification has um, no, no units, right? So I have negative three, <clears throat> and that means then that my magnification also equals the height of my image divided by the height of my object. So the height of my object times the magnification is going to give me the height of my image. So I have three times three, which is nine. So it's 9 centimeters. Right. This is negative, so that means that it is inverted. It's upside down. So I have a real inverted image that is larger right, by a factor of 3. <clears throat> and my image then appears in front of the mirror. upside down, it's larger. In fact, it's nine centimeters tall. I can do a similar calculation, this one somewhat reminiscent of our um, Bonnie mirror. So we have a shaving mirror, and they tell us the magnification right, is positive four. positive, that means it's upright. And if it's upright, that means that it's a virtual image. <clears throat> and, right, we want to know, is the mirror convex, concave, or flat, right? <clears throat> well, our object is going to be close to our mirror. Right, so it's going to be within the focal length, right? Because we're going to have our face close to our mirror. So it's going to end up that it's a concave, right? <clears throat> and then we're going to calculate what we have here. So what's the focal length of the mirror if your face is 10 centimeters in front of the mirror? Right, so this is a little more complicated kind of problem. So magnification equals minus d sub i over d sub o. Right, so we know this is 4, so I can rewrite d sub i, right? So it's going to be 4 times d sub o equals minus d sub i, right? or negative 4 times d sub o. So <clears throat> my 10 centimeters, that's where my face is, my face is the object. From this calculation, I can see then that d sub i is negative 40 centimeters. And now, right, <clears throat> I want to calculate my focal length of my mirror. So 1 over f equals 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i. This time we're not rearranging it to find d sub i, right? Instead, right, we're just plugging in our numbers. So we have 1 over 10 centimeters minus 1 over 
negative 40 centimeters, and now we can be assured that, right, it has to be concave. I have a negative here, I have a negative here, right, and that means that my focal length, or even one over my focal length, is going to be a positive number. So I have 1 over 10 minus a negative, so plus, right, 1 over 40, and that gives me 1 over f is 0.125, and we'll remember that our units are 1 over centimeters. So I can take the inverse of that, and I get that the focal length, oh, how come I got a different number than them? Uh, didn't know. Was 10, right? Yes, and it's 4. I'll just calculate that again. It could be that the answer is wrong from the book. Yeah. I still get eight. And again, right, it's positive and that means that it has to be concave. So it would actually make sense to go backwards in a sense. And <clears throat> I still don't know why they got 13.3. All right, so then we can talk about lenses. <clears throat> and again, same basic rules as mirrors. So a concave lens is diverging. That means that the focal length is negative, right? because it's diverging, and we have the same rules as a convex mirror, that the image is always virtual. And we can think of this, again, mathematically, right? 1 over d sub o plus 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f. Right? And that means that 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over d sub o. Right? So it's the same argument. It's diverging, so my focal length is negative. DO is always positive, <clears throat> right? And but I'm subtracting it, so there's no way around it. DI is always going to end up being negative. So we can see mathematically that the image is always going to be virtual. A convex lens, right, <clears throat> is converging, and whether or not we have a real or virtual image is going to be dependent, again, on d sub o and the focal length. Right? Again, same idea. We'll cut to 1 over d sub i is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over d sub o. Right? So d sub o always positive. The focal length, because it's converging, is positive. And so this negative sign just means that if 1 over d sub o Right, <clears throat> 1 over d sub o is bigger than 1 over f, right, then it's virtual. And if we have 1 over d sub o is smaller than 1 over f, then it's real. Right, so in this case, we have exactly this. There's our focal point, right, <clears throat> and here's our object. Our object is farther away. Right, so 1 over DO is smaller than 1 over F, right? And so we have a real image formed. Real image is inverted, and in this case, it's also smaller or reduced. <clears throat> this is a really cool demo that used to exist on our um, FET, but it just here we can see an example of we know the radius of curvature, or the in refractive index, because this is the lens. Calculating the focal length is more complicated. So, in other words, the focal length for a lens is not simply, right, half, half the radius of curvature. <clears throat> and we have our object, right, 
our mirror is converging. Here is our focal length. And so we can see that our image right, is behind the mirror. That means that it's real. Right? And it's inverted. Right? It's upside down compared to the object. So kind of a quick summary, if we have a diverging shape, whether it's convex mirror or a concave lens, we're always going to have a virtual image. If it's a converging shape, a concave um, mirror or a convex lens, then the image characteristics depend on the relationship between F and D sub O. And what is that relationship? Well, it doesn't matter, again, if it's a spherical mirror or if it is a, um, a thin lens. This, whoops, this is our relationship, right? And so, again, right, for converging, we see this relationship of 1 over F. We'll just write it this way. Whoops, minus 1 over D sub O equals 1 over D sub I. So... Diver, whoops, I don't know what I just did. Whoop, I just clicked something on my thing. We have, oh, I have to stop doing that. Okay, I did. So diverging means that F is always negative, right? And that means that D sub I is always negative. <clears throat> Here, it's again this relationship between 1 over F versus 1 over D sub O. If 1 over d sub o is bigger than 1 over the focal length, right, then d sub i has to be negative. If 1 over the focal length is bigger than 1 over d sub o, the object, then d sub i is positive. Just that simple. And again, we can see it mathematically, but or we can draw our lens or mirror diagrams, and we can see it that way. <clears throat> so... Here is another example. So we have an object that happens to be four centimeters tall. Right? It's a converging lens, right? And they tell us the focal length. So converging means that it's positive, 22 centimeters. The object is 15 centimeters away from the lens <clears throat> and we can do a ray diagram. I'm actually going to sketch the ray diagram after I do these calculations. So I'm going to do B first. Okay? <clears throat> and so we want to calculate the image and the magnification. So part B, right, we want to calculate D sub I and then from that we're going to calculate the magnification. So we're Back to our favorite equation, 1 over the focal length equals 1 over the distance of the object plus 1 over the distance of the image. So 1 over the focal length minus 1 over distance of the object is going to give us 1 over d sub i. So we can plug our numbers in. So I have 1 over 22 centimeters minus 1 over 15 centimeters. And so we can see already our mathematical case of 1 over 15, right, is bigger than 1 over 22. But we don't even have to think about that because we have calculators. Thank goodness for those. So we have 22, 1 over 22 minus 1 over 15. And that gives us negative 0 0.021. And that's 1 over centimeters, so that helps us remember that d sub i is the inverse of that, right? So we just have to flip it. <clears throat> and so we have negative 47 centimeters. And so we can see that our image is virtual. <clears throat> And again, right, we can tell that because we have this converging lens. So we'll just pretend that it's 
it's by sorry it's plano convex here is my right here is my focal length 22 centimeters here is my object <clears throat> and because of that I know that my image is going to appear right way it's going to be way over here so literally right my image is going to form here because here is my object it's going to be virtual so it's going to be upside down when it appears and <clears throat> I'm really bad very bad at doing ray diagrams <clears throat> And, oh, we also wanted to find the magnification. So magnification is equal to negative d sub i over d sub o. And so I have negative, negative 47 over 15 centimeters. Again, my centimeters cancel. And I'm going to have a positive magnification. Oh, that's right. Virtual means upright. Do, do, do. But it's going to be gigantico, right? So I have 47 divided by 15 is 3. So basically positive 3. It's really 3.1. Whoops. 3.1. So that was magical. Right? So it's 3 times higher, right? <clears throat> so my image is virtual, meaning in front of the lens. And it's virtual, again, because my object was placed between the focal length and the surface of the mirror. If we have to calculate the focal length of our lens, then we have to worry about the shape as well as the index of refraction, right? So this N is the same N that we've talked about earlier. Right, so this is the index of refraction. So it has to do with the material that we're using to create our lens. This is the idea behind people who have really thick glasses. They get high index of refraction lenses. What that means is that the curvature of the lens, this R1 and R2, don't have to be as large because we have a bigger N that gives us the same number of diopters. So if you go to the eye doctor, right, and he'll give you a prescription for your eyeglasses, it might say 0.46D, right, then, right, that's the number of diopters is capital D. And so the only other thing that we have to worry about is this idea of our R's. If it's a convex surface, it's positive, it's concave, it's negative, and if it's flat, it's infinite, meaning that if we're talking about my favorite Plano convex lens, right, so this side is convex, so this is a positive R, and this is infinite, and that means that we have 1 over R1 is positive, then 1 over infinity is just 0, so we only have to worry about the curved side. <clears throat> and so we can see then that if we have a converging lens, F is going to be positive, and if it's diverging, it's going to be negative. <clears throat> so this is just an example, right, and a reminder that for mirrors it's quite simple, plus or minus the radius of curvature divided by 2, but it only applies to mirrors, right? We have to use the lens maker's equation in order, that should be a plus, in order to ensure, right, that we are considering the fact that light is going to refract through the lens, right, so we need the index of refraction. <clears throat> and this is just a pretty picture reminding you that lenses have two sides, and so they always have two radii of curvature, Right? If we have a biconvex lens, then both sides are convex, so R1 and R2 are both positive. If we have a 
biconcave lens, then both sides are concave. And so both R's are negative. That means here, biconcave, right? Then F is going to also be positive. And here, F is going to be negative. So we just see another way of seeing that this is converging. And the shape of lens is diverging. So multiple ways to see right, the relationship between the shape of the lens as well as, and converging versus diverging. This is just <clears throat> an example that's already written out. So how far should an object be from a concave spherical mirror of radius 36 centimeters to form a real image one ninth its size, right? So magnification is going to be one ninth. And R is 36 centimeters. The, oh, this is a spherical mirror. So we get to just take half of 36, which is 18 centimeters. Magnification, right? Here we're going to use that to represent what D sub I is equal to. Here they didn't tell us exactly what we have as far as D sub I. They only told us the relationship between right, the magnification and therefore the relationship between the distance of the object and the distance of the image. So we have to do something a little fancy and stick in, right, <clears throat> one ninth DO for DI in our spherical mirror equation. And from there we can figure out that the distance our object needs to be placed from the face of our converging mirror is 180 centimeters. Right, and that's how it's going to be real. That makes sense because it's far away from my focal length, right? So outside of that, and so we end up with a real image. The size, right? That's why it has to be so far away. We could do the same thing with a plano concave lens. <clears throat> Here we have a radius of curvature of 50 centimeters for the concave surface. Plano right, means that the other surface is infinite as far as the radius of curvature because it's flat. So we have 1 over infinity. That just is 0. <clears throat> we have an index refraction of 1.35. Remember that n is always going to be bigger than 1 if we're talking about some kind of lens. <clears throat> and so now we calculated the number of diopters. I just converted my centimeters into meters so we could report it appropriately for right a lens kind of prescription it doesn't have to be a prescription lenses are often reported in diopters so negative 0.70 diopters if I take the fl the inverse of that so 1 over f is the power so that means f is 1 over the power and that gives it to us in meters so negative 1.4 meters, right? So my focal length is negative 140 centimeters. Negative means that it's diverging. <clears throat> and we knew that, right? Because it's a concave lens. So it has to be negative. Again, much more complicated than finding our mirror's focal length because there's more in play. <clears throat> Say now I place an object that is 6 centimeters high and it's 30 centimeters from the lens and we want to describe the image. Describe the image means that I have to calculate things as well as right, use my sign convention. So I write down what I'm given. It's the same lens, our con plano concave lens that has a focal length of negative 140 centimeters. We can already tell because it's a diverging lens that DI is going to be negative and therefore virtual and virtual images are upright. But we want to know more than that because the characteristics include what D sub I and M are. So we use our thin lens equation, right? Rearrange it again to find 1 over D sub I which is 0.040, and that's units of 1 over centimeters. So that means d sub i 
is oh that's right because it's it's d sub i is is negative I'm <clears throat> sorry is not negative is positive <clears throat> um, so it's a real image behind the lens <clears throat> and now we go and because F is negative. Oh, wait a minute. No, I do see dode stuff here. Ha ha ha. So 1 over F, <clears throat> right? So it's 1 over F. I knew that was wrong. 1 over F minus 1 over D sub O. <clears throat> easy to do these things, right? So we have 1 over the focal length, which is negative 140. Oops, wrong negative. Right, so inverse of that, right, minus the inverse of 30 centimeters, and that gives me negative 0.040. happens when you don't write it out right and then if I take the inverse of that I get negative 25 centimeters and that of course makes so much more sense because it can't be a real image and it can't be behind the lens because right it is a diverging lens and that means that my image can only be virtual and so this offers a good check, right, when we're doing calculations, that we make sure that our answer makes sense because it's so easy to do m minor errors when we're doing our calculations. So it's virtual, which means that, right, it is in front of the lens. And now we can do our magnification. So... We have, again, our, right, this was negative d sub i over 30, and that means that we end up with a positive 0.83, which means that it's upright, which it has to be, right, because we have a diverging lens, right? So it's virtual, and virtual images are always upright. And then our upright image is 5 centimeters, right? slightly smaller right so it's smaller than our object because our magnification is less than one and so we have <clears throat> right in front of the lens right and upright so very easy again to do something incorrectly and have it carry through so just like back in the first semester of physics, always important to make sure that your calculations and, and your answers make sense. We can also do lens combinations for things like microscopes and telescopes. We're not going to get very far doing this. That The real trick is that we have a lens, right, and it forms an image behind the lens, right, <clears throat> so that I have, right, I have an object, right, and it, it forms a real image behind the lens, and then that image is the object for my next lens, right, so now this is Right, and if my focal length, as long as it's outside my focal length, right, then I will get a new image, call it image two, right, and it'll be upright. <clears throat> and so this is why when you look in a microscope, it's not upside down, right, for instance. And the magnification is going to be literally the magnification of lens one, absolute values, so we're not worried about negative signs okay? times the magnification of lens two 
So if we had m1 was 2 and m2 was 3, 2 times 3 would be 6. And so, right, my final image would be 6 times larger than my initial object. It's the idea behind microscopes and telescopes. So pretty basic. And, and here's just prettier pictures than I can draw of this same idea. And just a quick example <clears throat> where we look at our first lens, creates an image, <clears throat> right? And then, right, our image is real. And then that image in turn, right, is used to find, right, it's the second image, sorry. It's the converging lens that we used and then that that image, which was at negative 25 centimeters. <clears throat> no, that won't work. Oops. We'll say that it was right a converging lens. It wasn't a, a second converging lens, right? So we're going to use, pretend that we have two converging lenses. Right? <clears throat> and we'll say that <clears throat> the not the same lens as above because that was diverging. So this one is but converging, right? So that's why this is positive 25 centimeters, right? Our second image, right, is going to be, right, it's 25 centimeters from my first lens, right, which means in turn it's 15 centimeters from my second lens, right? <clears throat> I know that my height of my image was five centimeters, and now I'm just going to use this as my object relative to my second lens. Okay. <clears throat> and again, we're just making a larger image that is real, meaning behind the lens, right? <clears throat> and so we see, right, our object that is enlarged, like we would for something like a microscope. And that is the end, right, of our section on lenses and mirrors.